Hello, in this video we are going to talk about acute hemolytic transfusion reactions. The most serious and potentially life-threatening reaction is the acute hemolytic transfusion reaction with acronym AHTR, which occurs when the donor red blood cells are incompatible with patient's plasma as a result of identification errors during the transfusion process. As few as 10 milliliters of wrong blood can produce acute hemolytic transfusion reaction symptoms. I think it's very important to note that within those first 10-15 minutes, about 10 milliliters of uh, transfused blood will be infused into the patient and you will be able to see the associated symptoms. Signs and symptoms of transfusion reaction are typically begin with fever and tachycardia, mild abdominal pain, chest pain, flank pain, back pain, then progresses to more severe symptoms such as high fever, chills, hypotension, dyspnea, flank pain, shock, oligouria, anuria, abnormal bleeding, red dark urine may be a first sign in an anastasized patient. If infusion is allowed to continue, symptoms progress to shock and disseminated intravascular coagulation. Let's take a look how and what exactly is causing all these symptoms. So recipients' antibodies will attack donor red blood cells. Complements, small, small molecules, will be fixed to the antibodies. These complements are C3A, C3B, C4A, C5A, C4A, and C3A. C5A and C3A uh, seem to be the most uh, dangerous ones. They also called anaphylactoids, complements that can cause anaphylaxis. They activate mast cells mast cells responsible for any allergic reaction. So mast cells uh, have appropriate receptors on their surface to which C5A and C3A complements connect to. This will lead to mast cell degranulation, which is release of histamine. Histamine in itself will increase uh, permeability of the blood vessels because blood vessels have the histamine and C5A receptors on them. Blood vessels will dilate. Blood will go to the tissues and will leave the circulation, which will lead to hypotension, which in turn will lead to possible shock. Histamine also will cause smooth muscle contraction in the lungs, which will lead to bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction will lead to difficulty breathe, breathing, wheezing, cough, and hypoxia. Eselectosin. Eselectosin is one of the cytokines, which connects to the smooth muscle cells in a GI tract. It will cause increased peristalsis. Increased peristalsis will lead to diarrhea and abdominal pain. Also, mast cells, the one that release histamine, uh, histamine will travel to the tissues and cause allergic type reactions such as rash, edema, and flushing. Histamine and complements activate mononuclear cells. They in turn release inflammatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6. Also, mononuclear cells will release chemoattractant proteins such as MIP2, MCP1, and interleukin-8. Histamine and complement proteins uh, will also 
activate platelets. Platelets in turn will release their cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1, interleukin 6, and uh, coagulation proteins will activate the coagulation pathways. Complements and cytokines, especially E selectosin, will bind to endothelial cells, trigger, triggering the coagulation cascade. So activation of the intrinsic pathway of factor 7 will activate factor 10, which will lead to activation of factor 5, prothrombin, then fibrinogen. As an end result, the fibrin clot will form. These fibrin clots are formed all over the body. This in turn will cause obstruction of small capillaries all over the body, which will lead to necrosis. And in second instance, depletion of platelets and clotting factors will lead to bleeding at the sites uh, where the bleeding is more susceptible, like uh, an injured extremity. Antigen antibody complex of the red blood cell will directly activate factor 12 in cladding cascade. Fibrin clots will form. Uh, it might possibly lead to disseminated intravascular coagulation. As said earlier, small clots will cause obstruction of the small blood vessels. Ischemia to the tissues will occur. Necrosis. Disseminated intravascular coagulation will activate more platelets. This is why there will be more bleeding at the injured sites. Next, a rapture of red blood cells will release free hemoglobin into the circulation. Um, this uh, free hemoglobin will occlude renal tubules in the kidneys leading to inflammation, which will be characterized by flank and the back pain. Urine rich in free hemoglobin will turn dark red. In addition, cytokines released uh, will cause vasospasms, which will contribute to acute kidney injury. Free hemoglobin in the blood will cause um, changes in color of the plasma after the blood sample was centrifuged and the plasma is on the top of the red blood cells, it will be pink instead of yellow. Also, after red blood cell rupture, there is a release of particles, cell particles, such as wall, part of the cell wall, prostaglandins, interleukins that are in the, uh, in the cell they will be released into the circulation. These parts will travel to the thalamus and activate the temperature regulating nucleus in the thalamus, which will cause increase in metabolism characterized by increased temperature of the body. So what can be done to treat acute hemolytic transfusion reaction? So some of the interventions will be to stop the transfusion immediately, disconnect the tubing from the IV catheter and prepare to infuse fresh administration set primed with 0.9 uh, sodium chloride uh, solution. Important note, uh, if acute hemolytic transfusion is suspected, you must not give another drop of donor's blood to the patient. So whatever blood is in the line, you should not give it. So disconnect it completely and flush it with normal, uh, and connect the new set of normal saline. Uh, you would notify the practitioner and blood bank or transfusion service immediately. Monitor the vital signs, anticipate the following interventions. Intravascular volume may be maintained with fluids to improve hypotension and promote renal circulation. Patient's respiratory status may have to be supported with a ventilator. 
Low-dose dopamine may be administered to increase renal function, but dopamine uh, administration in this situation is kind of controversial. Furosemide be, may be ordered to maintain urine output greater than 100 ml per hour to decrease the risk of renal damage. So, extreme care during the entire identification process is the first step in prevention. Clerical and human error involving proper patient identification, sampling, and blood unit identification are the most common cause of acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. The transfusion must be started slowly, and evaluation of the patient for reactions during the first 15 minutes is needed to monitor for initial signs and symptoms of acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. So let's uh, look at a uh, small vignette. A patient admitted with history of profuse bleeding. Patient is, uh, has pallor, hemoglobin is 6.3, MCV 67, platelets 185,000, and white blood cell count 7.5 thousand. One unit of packed red blood cells is transfused. Within the first 15 minutes into the transfusion, patient starts to complain of severe flank pain and chills. Temperature is 68.8, heart rate 120, blood pressure 104 over 69, and respiratory rate 19. Patient's urine dark brown, which of the following possible cause of these findings? So is it one, uh, donor anti-leukin antibodies are the cause? Second, uh, recipient's anti-immunoglobulin A antibodies against the donor immunoglobulin A? Three, is it ABO incompatibility? Or four, is it donor T lymphocytes that are causing all these problems. Since we're talking about acute hemolytic reaction and its incompatibility of the donor's red blood cells with the recipient's plasma, the answer is three, ABO incompatibility. So you have just made it to the end of the video. If you found the video useful, please click that like button. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching and I wish you great success.